Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, the King James Version Bible. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was his spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make, a public, make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the Jesus movie. Everybody knows about the Sam Basile pseudonym, who is not even a real person, movie called uh, The Muhammad Movie, which is actually made by two radical Egyptians who live here in Sodom and Gaborica, blaming it on the Jews and Americans, a, a Jewish American named Sam Basile, who they can't even find he exists anywhere in this country. This is called The Jesus Movie. This is a rebuttal to The Muhammad Movie. You heard about how Jesus Christ was conceived of the Holy Spirit, was not his, his mother, Mary was not known by man. God conceived his own son, Jesus Christ, through Mary's womb. He was born the God-man. And in the lowly manger, the lowliest place possible, to become man, a human being, and live the hard, terrible life of a human. See, sacrifices had to be made in the Old Testament to cover sins. The priest had to go into the temple and make sacrifices at different times sacrifice blood of animals to cover the sins of the people and God wanted to send his son Jesus Christ as a sacrifice that w that when people came to know him as Lord and Savior he would cover all of their sins past and present up to that moment every sin they ever committed up to that moment of asking him to forgive them would be forgiven future sins would be forgiven by what is known as repentance this is not works we're saved by grace alone repentance is not works repentance is in the Bible hundreds of times where God's word says, after you're saved, if you do not repent of your sins and keep your garments spotless, you will not step foot into heaven. But Jesus Christ was born in that manger, and even as a young boy, he was in the temples. He was teaching. He was teaching the leaders of the church about God because he was the God-man. He was, he was God incarnate, God in human flesh, God's own son, Jesus Christ. He grew up as a carpenter. He grew up to be a solid man. Solid man of God, and he spent his entire life hated, mistreated, abandoned, neglected, abused, just ostracized by his own people. And what did he do to deserve this? He went around healing people of fatal diseases. People that were blind could see, people that were deaf could hear, people that were demon possessed were freed of those demons. The demons feared Jesus, they knew he was the Son of God. He went around helping the lame to be able to walk, people who have never walked in their entire life, to actually have limbs grow straight and grow out of the crevices of their body so they can walk. He made the blind be able to see again. He made the deaf, the, the dumb be able to talk. He fed the multitude, thousands and thousands and thousands of people with a small handful of loaves of bread and fish, and they were still so much left over to fill tons and tons of baskets after everyone had eaten as much as they could eat. He turned water into grape juice wine, not alcoholic wine, grape juice wine at the wedding when they ran out of wine. He performed miracles everywhere he went. He raised Lazarus from the dead. When he said, Lazarus, come forth, if Jesus would have just said, come forth, every grave within earshot would have came forth and everybody would have came out. He had the power of God. He went to, for 40 days and 40 nights, didn't even eat or drink. We couldn't do that. If we tried not to eat or drink for 40 days and 40 nights, we'd die. He was the God-man, but he was still human. He, he's, he felt all the human emotions of pain, suffering, heartache, love, compassion, fear. 
Satan tried for 40 days and 40 nights to tempt Jesus to try to get him to bow down and worship him, to try to get him to to jump off the top of the temple and have the angels catch him. Jesus rebutted Satan every time with scripture. He was not going to fall for Satan's lies. He wasn't going to fall for Satan's junk. Jesus was a perfect man. He, he was the God man. He was the only human being to ever walk this planet that was perfect. There was no sin ever found in him. Nothing he ever did was wrong. He was absolutely perfect. He suffered. He, he, he faced every temptation that we will ever face and came through in perfection. He was one who loved. He loved his people. He was one who went and, and got regular Joes, fishermen, and just people that were just the just you know the lowliest jobs, and he made them his disciples, his inner circle. He made them fishers of men. He taught them. He loved them. He taught crowds everywhere he went. The woman with the issue of blood who had had a menstrual period her whole life that never stopped and wasted all of her money trying to get it cured. If she could just touch the hem of Christ's garment. She knew she could be healed. The man who was crippled and who was lowered into the roof of the house, he knew if he could just see Jesus, he knew he could be healed. The stories go on and on and on, the, the, the true stories of what Jesus did. Jesus Christ was kind and loving and compassionate and merciful and just. He didn't spend all his time hanging around all the Christians of the day, he hung around the people who were hurting, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, those who who were the scourge of society, were the people that Jesus spent time with because he loved them. Jesus was love. Jesus didn't go around telling people to kill people. He didn't go around telling people to rape and murder. He didn't have any wives, none. He, he, he didn't molest little children. He loved little children. He told people that whoever, whosoever harms even the least of these little children, it would have been better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck and cast into the deepest sea. Jesus was love, but Jesus also went into the, to the temple and cast out the money changers, those who were, who were buying and selling in the holy temple. He knocked over their tables, he whipped them, he threw them out. Jesus wasn't going to put up with that junk, but he was love and mercy. God's own son, can you imagine? God's own son coming down from heaven from his throne at the right hand side of God he helped God create the heavens and the, and the, and the earth and the universe he came down to live this life he didn't have to God didn't have to send his only son but he did he sent him as a peace offering so that he could come and live and die so we might be able to ask him to forgive our sins. We might be able to spend forever in heaven with them. So he spent his whole life loving. He spent his whole life kind. And what did people do? They, they, they spat upon him. They slapped him. They hated him. They abused him. They treated him so poorly. They tried to kill him so many, so many times. They were after him and they were just trying to, to ruin him. Trying to destroy him. He knew he was going to go to the cross. When he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross, he was bleeding blood. He, 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 blood was coming out of the pores instead of sweat. He was praying so hard. And the, his own people, the Jews, who he did nothing but kindness to, he did nothing but love for, they had him. They, they traded him. Instead of Barabbas, they said, give us Barabbas, we'll send Jesus to the cross, crucify him. And they spat upon him and they whipped him. And they cut him with a cat of nine tails. And they put a crown of thorns on his precious brow. And they mocked him and said, This is the king of the Jews. But they didn't mean he was the king of the Jews. They blindfolded him and slapped him around. And beat him. And they made him carry the heavy cross. All the way down the street. Until someone had to help him. Because he, he just couldn't bear the load anymore. He was bearing the load of all of our sin. It took him to the... To the to the mountain of the skulls, skull got the hill. And they didn't do the regular crucifixion. They they hammered nails into his precious hands and his feet. And they hung him up and they mocked him. And they and they, they cast lots for his clothes. And they called him names. And they said, If you're the real Christ, Son of God, come down from the from the cross. And they just made fun of him. And they kept spitting upon him and giving him vinegar. 
and just treat him like garbage. He didn't deserve any of that. Didn't deserve any of it. And the thieves in front of the cross on either side of him, one didn't understand, but the one knew. He knew who he was, and he said, you know, we deserve to be up here, but you, you don't deserve to be here, the Christ. Please remember me when you go to your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day I, t I, t I tell you that when I enter my kingdom, he'll be there with me. And Jesus just hung there, agonizing with all of the sin, all the sin of this world, of the earth, upon his shoulders. And God couldn't even look at him. God had to turn his back on his own son. And Jesus said, My father, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? He couldn't even look at him. He couldn't look at the sin because God is perfect. He can't see sin. He had his son be the sacrifice, be the sin for mankind. And then the great earthquake and the temple the temple veil just tearing in half and, and just all of the, the, the all of just terrible things happened, the terrible weather, and then they they were thinking, yeah, I think this guy might have been who he said he was, and they were scared. They were terrified. And one of his of his friends came and claimed his body, and they and they got it ready and, and put him in a special tomb that they had purchased for him. And they thought that was it. Satan thought it was over. Satan thought, you know what? <laughs> he he thought, I got gotcha. you. But no. Jesus might have been down, but he wasn't out. On the third day, praise the Lord, he rose out of the tomb. The stone rolled away. He came out. Mary Magdalene saw him there, and she didn't even recognize him. She thought he was gone. When the stone was rolled away, it was empty. And he came out of the garden and spoke to her and said, I haven't gone back to heaven yet. You can't touch me, but go tell my disciples that I live. Praise the Lord, he rose from the dead. His disciples saw him, and thousands of people saw him. And he told everybody, he said, I need you to share my good news and tell everybody about me. Tell everybody that I love them. Tell everybody that I died for their sins. I'm going back to heaven to be at the right hand side of my Father. And I'm going to make a place for all of you forever to be able to live with me in heaven, even though none of us deserve it. He did that for us. And he's there right now waiting. He's waiting for God to give him the word for the rapture. That's what he did, my friends, for you, for me, for Muslims, for Hindus, for everybody in the whole world, Buddhists. It doesn't matter who they are, every color, every creed, every background, he did it for us. He didn't come out like in the Muhammad movie, even though the Muhammad movie, the, the Islam is mad, is a very accurate movie. It might be silly, but the premises are, are accurate. Muhammad, Islam, the Quran, they're all parts of a, of a false religion, of an evil religion that wants to kill, that wants to murder everyone. They won't follow their rules. They aren't holy. They are evil people. Jesus Christ is perfect and holy. He died for all of Islam, for all Muslims, for everyone. He died so they can come to know him as Lord and Savior. But they have to ask him, though. We all have to come to him and, and, and say, Jesus, I know I've sinned, and I know I've done bad things in my life. And I understand who you are and what you did for me on that cross. And I'm sorry for what I did, and I, and I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. We have to do that. And Jesus has it out there for everyone. I love Muslims. I love everybody involved in Islam. I love all Buddhists, all Hindu. I love all Jehovah's Witness. I love all of Chrislam, mixing Christianity and Is Islam. I love the Seventh-day Adventists. I love the, the New Agers. I love the Catholics. I love the Mormons. I love all of these religions that are fake and false and phony and that are dying going to hell without Jesus Christ. I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. Jesus Christ can't look upon that sin and accept it into heaven. God can't look upon sin. Jesus Christ is our intercessor between God and man. Jesus Christ took sin upon him, but he could not have sin in heaven. He's perfect. He's been glorified, a glorified body now. He's forever the God, man, and human body. His Father God in his original state, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. They can't have sin in heaven. That's the rub. 
but they don't make anybody. See, Islam, they force you to do things. They tell you you have to do this, or they'll chop your head off, or chop your finger off, or your hand off, or cut your tongue out. Jesus Christ and Jehovah God don't force anybody to do anything. They give you the choice. They say, follow me. Follow me. Ask me to forgive you of, of, of your sins and follow me. And live with me forever in heaven. Or you can reject me and live forever in hell. But it's your choice. He gives you the choice. They give you the choice. Unlike Islam. Muhammad was not a good man. He was an illiterate man. He was a homosexual. He was a, a rapist. He molested children. He was a bad person. The book that he wrote, he couldn't write or read, but he had it written for him. The Quran is not true. Their God, Allah, is borrowed from the old moon god cult. He's not true. He's a false god. Jehovah God, the God of the Bible, the Holy Bible, is the real God. Jesus Christ, his only son, is a true prophet. That's the son of God. And the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. They're all together. They're the triune, the three in one but they're also separate individuals. I know a lot of anger and hatred is spread from the, the supposed Sam Basile pseudonym who's not even a real person. I know our president and all the people who are involved behind the scenes are trying to frame this Basile, not even a real person, by calling him a Jewish American because they know that Islam hates Jews and they hate Americans. And, and, and I believe our president and our leaders are trying to start a holy war, trying to start a big, terrible thing was actually two radical Egyptians living in this country who are behind this film, their own people. It's time to stop all this madness. Don't let a silly movie get you mad. Understand, my friends, that so, that, that so many Muslims are turning to Jesus Christ right now. Praise the Lord. So many Muslims, so many Arabs in the Middle East are leaving Islam. Islam won't tell you that because they don't want you to know the truth. And they threaten to kill Christians, and they do kill Christians who, who reject Islam and who convert. But so many do it that they don't see, and that, and that they can't grab. They can't get all of them. They're understanding the truth that I've said in this whole video, who Jesus Christ is, what he did for us, what his mission is, about heaven, about hell. Because I'm telling you a, a fact, Muslims in, in Islam, your prophet Muhammad is in hell right now. He rejected Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Jesus says that no one comes to the Father, God, Jehovah God, except through me, Jesus Christ. Muhammad is in hell, sadly. Allah is not a real God. All of the suicide bombers, all the ones who go out and kill people thinking they're going to get all these virgins, they're in hell right now because they died committing murder. Jehovah God says in his word that he wrote, Thou shalt not kill. It's murder. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to bring you to the truth. Because you have to understand this. Jesus Christ, this Jesus Christ I'm talking about, is about to break the skies. Praise the Lord. He's going to come to, to earth soon. He's going to take all of the true Christians. There's going to be a lot of Christians. Most Christians, actually, sadly, will be left behind. So you'll still see all the Christians. You might not believe. But the true Christians, like myself, and the small numbers, not that I'm anything. I'm nothing but a slave for Jesus Christ. But the true Christians... We're going to be in heaven with Jesus. All the small children and the babies, we're going to be in heaven with Jesus. All the people who are mentally retarded, who can't think and act for themselves, will be in heaven with Jesus. All the dead who have died in the past, who were saved by Jesus' blood and lived for him the way the Bible says, will be in heaven with Jesus. But everybody else will be here, stuck here on earth for seven years of hell on earth. They will make this terrible terrible, terrible world we live in right now seem like perpetual Disneyland. This is what I'm trying to tell you, my friends. I'm trying to let you know what's going on. <coughs> I'm trying to let you know what's coming up in the near future, on the horizon. You need to be right with Jesus Christ. Ask Him to be your Lord and Savior, to forgive you of your sins. I'm going to have a prayer here shortly. You can pray with me. Because if you're left behind, There'll be a false Jesus. His name's going to be the Antichrist. He'll pretend like he's Jesus Christ. He'll have all kinds of phony miracles. He'll have people surrounding him. And he'll fool so many into thinking he's Jesus Christ. But he'll make you take a mark in your forehead or in your hand. They will, they will pledge allegiance to him. That will, that will mean you're marrying him in God's eyes, which will mean you will spend forever in hell. 
You cannot ever take that mark. You have to refuse it. You have to find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, refuse that mark, and you can be in heaven forever as soon as you die. If not, you'll spend it forever in hell. I love you guys. I want you to know the truth. I'm going to pray with you here in a moment, and I want you to pray this prayer with me. Anybody, I don't care if you're Islam, Muslim, Arab, anybody that I've mentioned before, I want you to pray this prayer so you can have the, the, the assurance that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And then you just live the way the Bible says. And I'll talk to you a little bit at the end about how you have to live. I'll give you some pointers right from the Bible. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I love you. I thank you for this. I thank you for all you did for us, for your life. I try to condense it in a short video. You did so much. I just try to make it short and sweet. So much more you did, but I want to get the nuts and bolts in. Please help Islam and the Muslims to not be looking at this so-called Sam Basile movie, but to look at the truth of Jesus Christ, what you did for us on the cross your Father, Jehovah God, and to know the truth, and to come to know you as Lord and Savior, and all people who follow false religions, or who don't follow any religion, I pray that all of them, as many as possible, come to know you as Lord and Savior, when I pray this prayer. In your precious name I ask it, amen. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know that I've sinned, I know I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again from the dead on the third day. And I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right hand side of God your Father on your throne. And I believe you've been making a place in heaven since that day for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. I pray that you would cleanse my heart, wash it white as snow, come live in my heart, make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it, amen. Now when you pray this prayer, praise the Lord, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Now when you get saved, you need to get you a King James Version Bible. It's the only real Bible out there, my friends. It's the living, breathing Word of God. The way you feed your body with food and water every day to nourish it, this King James Version Bible will nourish your spirit and your soul if you read it every day. Jesus wants you to pray to Him every day. He loves you. He's your best friend now. He wants you to talk to Him every day. You need to get water baptized. Find a Christian church and be dunked under water, immersion baptized, as soon as you possibly can. You need to pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit from head to toe. You should draw closer to Christ by reading His Word, by praying, by living for Him, in what little time we have left before the imminent rapture of Jesus Christ coming to take us to heaven that I talked about. Find a Christian church. Take your King James Version Bible to church. I know it's hard to find a church, but keep looking. And when that preacher preaches about your Bible, if I talk, if anyone else talks about the Bible or writes about it, if what we say and talk and teach does not match your Bible, you close your Bible, you get up and you walk out immediately, you unfriend that person on Facebook or on YouTube, you run for your life because your very spiritual life depends on it, my friends. Anyone who would lie to you about what Jesus Christ says, anyone who would lie to you about what Jehovah God says in His own Holy Word, the Holy Bible, they will drag you to hell with them forever if you allow them to. If you have any questions for me, any comments, concerns, if you want me to pray for anything from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me here. I have what's known as a gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it, but praise the Lord, when I prayed for it, He gave it to me. And this faith makes me believe and know that if you ask me to pray for you, you need a miracle in your life, I believe and know that God will perform that miracle if it's within His holy will. And if He does, it will all be through His praise, honor, glory, power, might, majesty, love, mercy, compassion, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering. Nothing to do with me. I'm the very least in God's kingdom. I'm a slave for Jesus Christ. I'm a tiny fish swimming in a huge ocean. Please share the link to this video with everyone you can, friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, family members, with a stranger, drop it in a blog somewhere and plant the seed and walk away and let God water it so it can grow. What most people teach nowadays from false religions, even from Christians, that lie about the Holy Bible, that teach things that are untrue, that tickle your ears, that make you want to feel good, not the truth. These are the words that lead to, to forever in hell. The words that lead to eternal life in heaven with Jesus Christ are taught through the King James Version Bible first chapter book. The book of Genesis, the very beginning, to the book of Revelation, the very end. And all 66 chapters. This is the word that leads to eternal life in heaven. 
It's the word that I preach on this channel. Not because I'm anything, because God's everything. I love you all so much, and I pray for you every day. I pray that God would bless you, and I pray that many would have prayed this prayer and have become Christians now. Thank you. Good night.